You can't. The age is for me. It's 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 a it's a number. Okay, we need to talk. Okay. So hopefully in the beginning you're young. You can eat what you want, you can sleep when you want, and you can exercise when you feel like it. The years go by, maybe put on some pounds. You go to the doctor, and all of a sudden, you get this blood results that's just riddled with red flags and warning signs. You're gonna have a choice now. You can fix everything that's wrong with your life, change your diet, exercise more, Maybe lower your stress level. Or you continue doing as you're doing, take the pill, accept the side effects, and have poor health. So if you're like me and you choose number one and want to fix everything, then this video is for you. Because I'm going to give you 10 tips so you can ride your bike and cycle for the rest of your life. So we're going to get the exercise thing covered. Food and diet, that's another time. Tip number one, have variety in your rides. You know what's boring? Always doing the same thing. Change it up, different places, different people. And if you're lucky enough and you have a road, gravel or a mountain bike, switch it up. You want to clear your head? Need some alone time? Go ride by yourself. Feeling social and chatty? Connect with your local bike shop. Yo. Join a group ride or a club. Sick and tired of all humanity? Go ride off roads by yourself. Because without this, I think I'd lose my marbles. It's just nothing. Tip number two, be comfortable. Depending on age, injury, ability, and goals, your position on a bike can truly be unique to yourself. Should you go to a bike fitter? Maybe, maybe not. Learn how to find out your correct seat height for any bike. It's not that hard. I made a YouTube shorts video for that and I'll put the link in the description. But after you know how to find your seat height, the rest of the position will evolve over time. You might have to adjust your reach or handlebar height after an injury. After I broke my back in 2007, I rode around with this thing for two years before I could slowly get back into a more aerodynamic position. My better half, she has two herniated discs in her neck. And to solve this problem, she has an adjustable stem. My dad had knee replacements and he rode with this double linkage crank for the rest of his life. Whatever it is you have to do to keep riding, do it. But just keep on riding. Cause once you stop riding for a long time, it's really hard to get back into it. So do the adjustment so you can continue riding and be comfortable for the rest of your life. And instead of spending $300 for a bike fitter, maybe spend that money on another stem, handlebar, seat, maybe shorter cranks if you have hip problems. Spend the money on the gear to make you comfortable. A bike fitter, unless he knows how to deal with people that are injured, might not be the best way to spend your money. But uh, get the right parts. Oh. Tree down. I'm fogging up. I don't know where to go. Oh wait, where's the trail? Right. I don't know where the trail is. I don't think I'm lost. I mean, to be lost, I gotta know where I'm at. I don't even know where I'm at. Tip number three, make time for riding. This is a big one. It's the main reason why people quit riding. And I get it, there's work, there's family, there's friends, and then there's just life. So here's some helpful tips on how to get some riding and ride to work. I'm just saying, depending on where you live, you can commute by bike to work. I used to do this when I was a tool and die maker in Germany, and it was 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon. And the fitness level I reached was pretty amazing. Another great tool is Swift. It doesn't have to be Swift. It can be trainer road, groovy, basically an indoor riding workout setup that's fun, easy to get to and ready in a moment's notice. If you have the space somewhere to have the trainer set up so it only takes you five minutes to hop on and start riding, that's gold. And as far as friends go, I only have friends that ride bikes, so it's easy for me. So if all your friends are bar hopping, beer drinking, pot smoking, fast food junkies, then some of those traits will transfer over to you. 
and I hope it's only the pot smoking. Okay, now I know where I'm at. Tip number four, set goals. There are folks out there that just ride. And if that's you, congratulations. But that's not me. I like a goal that I can work towards. This doesn't have to be a race. It could be training for an upcoming bike trip, a long loop. Maybe you wanna slay some Strava records. Yeah! Goals are a great motivator for riding consistently. All I would suggest is that you somehow keep a record of what you're doing and have some baseline numbers where you can see how much better have you become. Use Strava or training peaks to keep track of it. Tip number five, lowered expectations. I deliberately put this right behind goals. I see this way too often. People set their goals too high and if they don't get there, they quit. Also, your goals will have to change as you get older. Maybe it was about winning races at one point in your life, and now it's about finishing in the pack. The goalposts are constantly shifting throughout life. And if you set your goals too high, chances of quitting cycling altogether are pretty high. You have to know how to suck at cycling before you get better. And trust me, I know how to stink. Tip number six, take the long way. Riding on busy roads is just dumb. There are riders and groups that are truly talented in picking the worst roads possible. And I will only put up with this once. If you value your riding time, you know the smaller and longer roads, sometimes more elevation, we will be so much more relaxing. And who doesn't like cutting your chances of getting hit by a car? This guy. Tip number seven, travel with your bike. Travel by bike. That's a big one for me. The best way to see any place is on a bike. And by bike, I mean any bike. I have done great 30 mile rides on beach cruises in Mexico. Sure, you're not breaking any records, but you're actually seeing, feeling, and smelling wherever you are. Just don't be a bike snob. Rent whatever bike you can get and start exploring. It's the only way to truly experience a new place. Tip number eight, get some coaching. This can go in any direction. You might need some help with basic skills or learn how to fix your bike. Then there's how to train to get fitter and stronger. Should you join a gym? Spoiler alert, yes. A good coach can help you stick to a schedule, achieve your goals and keep you from injuring yourself. If you have the extra funds, it might be worth it. If not, you can research most training methods online and make your own plan. Plus there are great training tools and trackers like Training Peaks and Trainer Road or Strava. Tip number nine, experiences over equipment. Ooh. I have so many awesome memories of races, rides and bike vacations. But you know what I don't remember? What bike was I on? The experience always trumps the equipment. Of course, you don't want to ride a bike that's a piece of crap that breaks down every five minutes. But after reliability, there isn't really much that keeps you from having a great day on any bike. If I had $10,000, I'd spend 2,500 bucks to get a bike and the rest of the money, I would just blow on travel, experience and events and entry fees. I mean, if I had a million dollars, I'd probably buy a $10,000 bike, but that's not the question. I would never buy a $10,000 bike. And tip number 10, marry somebody who likes bikes. And that's the ultimate home run. Not expecting anybody to follow this. Marry somebody who likes bikes. You can only follow this if you haven't done it yet. Take it for what it's worth. Having someone in your life that supports your cycling lifestyle instead of criticizing it is the best. This doesn't mean he or she has to love bikes as much as you do. But the fact that you get to ride and spend money on bike stuff is a huge plus for your happiness. I couldn't imagine being with somebody who hates bikes. I mean, the ultimate win is if both you guys like bikes and you ride together. Maybe one of you gets an e-bike so it's more equal. Find ways to ride together because if you ride together, you'll probably stay together. All right, well, they have it. Top 10 tips to keep you riding for the rest of your life. And remember, I'm an idiot. And that changed my life. And if, you can, if I can do it, you can do it. The diet part, I'll cover that in a future video. See that bridge right there? Only high cholesterol food that bridge ate. This was just the exercise part and riding a bike is something you're gonna be able to do forever. Low impact until you fall off. So, hey, listen, please like, subscribe. Maybe check out this video now. I'll see you on the other side.